Hi, I'm Trina Watt of Foundries.io and welcome to Embedded World. We're here at the first day of the show and lots going on as ever. And um, what we're showing here um, this week is secure, com customizable embedded Linux platform. And why are we doing this? Well, really the main driver that we're seeing at the moment is customers are finding it difficult to secure the IoT and Edge devices. So they want to find an easy way of doing that, that they can do and they can support for the lifetime of the product. So security is hitting the news all the time at the moment from large enterprises to small um, customers are struggling to do that and we're providing an easy way to do that over the lifetime of a product. It's kind of the big next step for all the IoT and all the arm part devices to not just be cool and awesome but also be secure and updated forever yep. which is a huge challenge. It's, it's a huge challenge and I think what we're working on is how do you make that maintainable and supportable over the time. You can't just have your product secure when you ship it out the door. It still needs to be secure 10 years later with all the different dynamics that are happening in the marketplace in between. So what are you seeing in the market and what is uh, how do you position the Foundry's I.O. product overall and what's the marketing strategy? So we're really interested in, in helping small and startup companies all the way up to enterprise companies to get the benefits. So this week we've had three new customers have gone public who are small startup customers all in very diverse different places. We have Ailer who does a global um, freight um, um, product that allows you to, to track freight products throughout the world. We have Madebot that have a really cool little um, robotic vacuum and then we have Wi-Fi securities who are enabling public secure Wi-Fi spots. So very diverse um, companies working with foundries. Also we've got Arm are using um, foundries.io products to help them with their design start and their core stone products and, and offering customers a very secure way of supporting those products too. Because if you want to have a trillion ARM devices, you want to have them not be all hacked by some hackers somewhere, right? We, we want them to be secure, and I think that's where people get their real confidence in their IoT devices. If they know that they are secure, they know that they are kept up to date. So then they can relax and enjoy the benefit of the data and the benefit of the functionality that they get. So we're going to be checking out the demos just very shortly. Um, what's, the, what's the market... Uh, adoption going to be in the next five years, do you think? The market adoption is good. I'm really seeing it to be, to be huge. I mean, we're really wanting to make it very simple for small companies to get the benefit right from the start. So the more the merrier, we want as many customers as we possibly can getting the benefit because the more customers that are using it, the better the product will be for everyone. And how much is it small or big customers? And you We've, work perfectly with, with yeah, all? We are seeing the full spectrum from enterprise right the way down to people one or two in a company who realize that by using this product they can save on their software costs, they can get to market quicker, but they can also make it secure from the start. And you also have different kind of like pricing for startups is different than... For startups, for under, for under um, 10 people in a company we, we have a special startup discount as well to really help people get moving quickly. Hi, I'm George Gray. I'm CEO of Foundries.io and we're here at Embedded World 2020 showing our technology, the Foundries LMP and Foundries Factory product. We have a number of demonstrations that we're doing here. What you see here is a ST, STM32 MP1 Linux board and this is an Apalis uh, IMX6 board from Toradex. And what both of these boards are doing, as you can see from these screens, <coughs> these boards are running continuous update cycles. So if I uh, go into the screen, we'll show you what's happening. This is a console terminal, and what's happening continuously is a sequence is starting, We've done 93 updates today so far, and we're changing from accelerated graphics to an upstream frame buffer implementation. That's on this board. On this board, we've just done a downgrade 
to a previous build and it's now rebooting and then it will restart and it's updated containers, the kernel and the firmware as needed. These are incremental updates, they're not AB. So they're faster, less expensive and use less system resources. So this is now ready for its login and this has installed the image and is now doing its reboot. Now interestingly, if I go back onto this screen, you will see here the cloud uh, implementations. So what this is showing is the ST board and you can see that it, these containers are not running when the uh, device is rebooting and then they go on recording data. This is the processor memory for both of these boards. This is actually showing you the robot, which I'll show you later. And this is a, a remote device. And this is running on IBM's Watson platform. And we can also uh, show you the same information that is both on AWS and on IBM Watson. So we have simultaneously different containers on the same device talking to both Amazon Web Services and to IoT, Watson IoT, IBM clouds. Um, as you see, the frame buffer is, this is now the frame buffer implementation. And again, if I go back to the updates, you will see, um, you will see the updates continuing con continuously. This has now done 167 updates on the, on the uh, IMX6 board, and these are fully secure. The next demonstration we have is of an industrial robot. Uh, this is a robot for educational use. It's based on the Raspberry Pi 3, and it's running Ubuntu and uh, ROS, Robot Operating System. Um, what we've done is containerized that so that rather than having to update with, update with an SD card, you can actually update this over the air. We've put the entire operating system into a container and we are also have another container which is showing the processor and memory usage of this device. So what I'm going to do is run a little demonstration um, of a business card and I am going to accept GDPR by pressing this green button. So when I press this green button it's going to take my card and because I've accepted GDPR it's going to keep give me give uh, foundries my card and it's now going to finish. On the other hand if I do this again, what we can do is show what would happen if I did not accept GDPR. So I'm pressing the red button this time. It's going to take my card. And this time, because I did not accept the data protection, it's giving me it back. So this is an example of a legacy application which has been containerized. Additional functionality has been done to go to the cloud. So you can see up here, this is where the robot was operating. This is where it's quiet. And these are the memory increases when it's actually operating. And those containers have been added and are running simultaneously with the vendor's original software. And we can update the whole platform. So what we're showing today at Foundry's Factory is essentially this ability to take a over-the-air updatable secure Linux that's minimal and designed for IoT and embedded devices and we're able to actually have our customers customize that distribution for their own hardware and their own application and add their own IP and benefit from all of the security and the over-the-air update capabilities that we've built in. 
They can continuously update their product over its entire lifetime and there are no per unit fees or costs of any kind. No metering fees, it's a fixed price subscription per product. And we've announced some early customers, including Maidbot, who've built an industrial uh, robot vacuum cleaner, Ayla, who are working on global asset tracking with, with containers, and Wi-Fi Securities, who are building a secure uh, IoT product. So Maidbot is one of our early customers. What they are doing is creating robotic vacuum cleaners with a LiDAR. Uh, and this is using the Foundry's factory software for their build. And they can then use containers to update their builds over the air at any time using their own business logic. It's pretty cool, it's like one of those toys you had or your kids had that move in any direction on the floor. So for a device like this, it's very important to have new features eventually in, in updates, but also security, security updates, updates, right? security updates and, and, and any new features they want to introduce, yes. And uh, updating in general is a big topic in the embedded world, right? So this is more and more important and you, you have a special way of doing it. So what is unique about Foundry's technology is that today everybody is building their own customized Linux distribution for embedded devices, often using Yocto. But everybody is doing it differently and everybody is trying to build over-the-air updates in. What Foundries have done is they've effectively, we've created the Android of IoT, but everybody's product is different. So everybody can take our standard Linux distribution designed for IoT and embedded with built-in security and over-the-air update capability, and they can then customize that easily using Foundries Factory to their own application and add their own hardware support, their own IP, AI, whatever it is. But because they're building from our core platform, all of these derivative products get the benefits of our security platform and over-the-air update platform. So this is providing a standardized way of doing OTA updates on a whole range of different products. And uh, it's easy for them to add their custom stuff on top? Yes, so our customers maintain their own source code and their own changes and effectively we keep the whole distribution continuously updated with latest security patches and our customers keep their own IP updated. So the customer can focus on their own IP and their own value add and their own application and not worry about the core security updates in the core OS and the mechanisms to do that update because that's all taken care of. You can update incrementally, you can change the kernel, you can change the firmware, you can change the containers, and you can change applications. So embedded devices in general have a system to update um, the secure. Yes, and so this e is a universal, incremental, over-the-air update that's built using industry standard specifications. Um, we support something called TUF, which stands for the Update Framework, which is a threat-modeled security platform for doing over-the-air updates in a secure fashion. So we follow that specification. The Distribution is available uh, as an open source distribution. Anybody can contribute to it. Um, but what our technology, the Foundry's Factory, allows you to do is customize that to your own use case and requirement and still keep the benefits of the core security and update software. Because uh, when people do IoT and do so many different devices, is too much of a burden on each of them to redo the same kind of work that's required to be secure if you think and you have about, the top engineers doing yeah, that. If you think about the cost of building your software from scratch, you are building and maintaining a Linux distribution for life. That's very expensive and needs skilled engineers that are not necessarily adding to your product value add. It's not your IP and your product. 
So what we do is we essentially take care of that core security platform and over-the-air update platform for all of our customers who are now using a standard security update platform and then they can focus on their own value add and their own differentiation. And um, how has been the, the traction recently? What's the so what's the next? We're really pleased. We've announced um, at this show. We've announced new customers, as you can see, um, in robotics, in um, Wi-Fi security devices, in factory automation, and we're also working. We've announced that we're working with Arm, who are using our technology to deliver. Um, upstream updates to their customers uh, and demonstrate the latest technology running on their new IP. My name's Ian Drew. I'm chairman and founder of Foundries IO. We started this company four years ago because we saw a huge opportunity in IoT. And everybody talks about huge opportunities in IoT. But the problem is most people talk about vertical solutions. They talk about their own solution stack, they talk about their own cloud, they talk about their own chips. And what they're really trying to say is, how do you enable my product into your solution? What we did was we took a totally new way of looking at IoT. We wanted to go horizontal in the industry, we wanted to enable every chip and every cloud to have the best level of security, to have the best application layer, to have the best testing through the full life cycle of, a, of the product. And you can only do that with Linux and open source. You can only do that when you have some of the key engineers who are brilliant at Linux, who are brilliant at security, but put them in a but put them in an environment which allows them to work horizontally, which allows them to work from products such as light bulbs all the way through to connected cars. We want to create a very thin Linux solution that is the most compatible with every architecture, the easiest to use and the most secure through the whole life cycle of the product, through continual testing from day one of design of the product all the way through till the life cycle is finished of that product you get OTA solutions which are easy to use fragmented so you don't have to do A to B fully secure allowing the latest generation of software to be on the latest generation of product which we believe is the most secure solution possible so kind of like the the biggest success story in uh, European tech is ARM, right? And it's everywhere and it's just um, huge. It's billions and billions of devices. But the big challenge is making them secure and getting all the Linux updates and not getting hacked, right? The biggest, if you look around this trade show, this trade show is built on ARM architecture, but there's also RISC-V solutions and x86 solutions. We see a need for an operating system that spans all of those to make it secure not just when the product is bought, but through the life cycle of the product. We see billions of devices in billions of OEMs, in billions of people's hands, needing to be secure not just when they're bought, but the three, four, five, 10, 20 years that that product is being used on pipelines, in medical devices, in robotics. Those billions of devices would come from ARM, but also from other solutions as well. Security is not just around hardware, it's around that hardware, firmware, and software solutions, and providing the best of the best all the time that people want it. And uh, another angle onto this is also the huge success, as far as I understand, of Linaro. I founded Linaro 10, 12 years ago with George Gray as the first CEO. We saw a huge opportunity to create a super kernel for Linux, for ARM. We defragmented the marketplace and Linaro became uh, multi, multi-million revenue 
with lots of different customers all the way through from enterprise all the way through to uh, very low end suppliers. For us, what we did at Arm was we defragmented the market. I'm really proud of what we did there because we created Linux solutions where Linus Torvald said we were very fragmented. We unified solutions but we created opportunities for growth. We created much better solutions because we were working together. We took that same solution inside of Foundries. We brought some of the people over. We have some of the same culture, which means we can work across different industries, across different suppliers, across different clouds, across different architectures. And, and there's a lot to do with this. Uh, you have to have the most talented engineers in the world to get the perfect security updates in there, everything to be just perfect for everybody to use the best. You don't want to have an old Linux that has holes and get me hacked. And If you look at hacking solutions and talk to the black hats and the white hats, the easiest way to hack some solutions is to go back and go, how old is the operating system or how old is the app and come through some of the vulnerabilities. To fix those you need really secure solutions. Not just really secure solutions now but really secure solutions all the way through the life cycle of the product. What you want is the latest generation of middleware, the latest generation of firmware, the latest generation of Linux fully tested on your solution so it's ready to be over the air updated. For us this is about providing the best of the best not just when a product is bought but when the product life cycle goes from 1 to 10 to 20 years always continually testing always providing that latest kernel that latest solution stack to the OEM so they can update the firmware and software in their device to make sure it it is secure all the way through that life cycle. So when there's a trillion IoT devices out there, ARM devices out there, most of them will need a solution like this? When there's a trillion devices in the market, when there's billions of suppliers, when there's billions of people using this, somebody needs to provide a base solution that will provide the latest generation of operating system and firmware. We believe Foundries is the place for that solution across a horizontal layer of every supplier.